The former Home Secretary, Leon Britton, has become embroiled in a row over what action he took and didn't take when he was given a dossier in the 1980s containing allegations of child sex abuse. The file was one of a number prepared by the late Tory MP Geoffrey Dickens, alleging that prominent public figures were involved in paedophilia. Leon Britton admitted today that he was given the dossier when Home Secretary and said that he passed it to officials for further examination. The dossier is now missing. Here's Jim Reid. Police are now sure this man was a serial sex offender. To date, there have been 144 complaints against Cyril Smith. The Liberal MP escaped prosecution in his lifetime. But for some, there has long been the suspicion that wrongdoing went much further, that other members of the establishment could have been part of an organised ring involved in child abuse. We know from uh, from my investigations into Cyril Smith that he, that he was uh, abusing boys up and down the country, uh, involved in a network within London of abuse, and I think we need to name the other perpetrators that belong to that network. Thirty years ago, this man was a campaigner, a thorn in the side of the establishment. The late Tory MP Geoffrey Dickens spent most of his career fighting child abuse. In 1981, he used parliamentary privilege to name the diplomat Sir Peter Heyman, now dead, as a paedophile. Two years later, we now know he handed two lengthy dossiers to the then Home Secretary Sir Leon Britton, documents that were thought to contain the names of suspected abusers in high office. Those papers were delivered here to what was then the Home Office. It's the contents of those two bundles which are now at the centre of this complicated and murky story. Sir Leon Britton leaving his London home today. There's going to be a statement uh, at lunchtime. Last year the Tory peer said he could not remember being handed the dossier in the first place. This afternoon though he released a statement saying, as I recall, Geoffrey Dickens came to my room with a substantial bundle of papers. I asked my officials to look carefully and report back to me if they considered any action needed to be taken. I do not recall being contacted further about these matters. But later this afternoon, he clarified his position again. The Home Office said a review last year of old documents that went almost unnoticed at the time found a letter from Lord Britton that showed parts of the dossier were sent to prosecutors. That, that review also found Lord Britton had acted appropriately in dealing with the allegations. People will be concerned because uh, Lord Britton is looking evasive. Uh, the comments he's put out today are contrary to what he said previously. He changed some of his statements uh, during the course of today in response to things that the Home Office officials were saying. Uh, it doesn't move us any further forward. Uh, perhaps there is a need for him to go before a select committee and answer questions. In many ways, today's statements raise far more questions than answers. We still don't know exactly what kind of material was in these files. Where are they now? Do they even still exist? And what kind of actions, if any, did the police just around the corner in Scotland Yard take based on that material? In newspaper interviews at the time, Geoffrey Dickens threatened to expose prominent figures if the Home Secretary failed to act. He told the Daily Express, I've got eight names of big people, really important names, public figures, and I'm going to expose them in Parliament. One of these people is a friend of mine, but you have to be merciless, protecting the young. For reasons that are not clear, Dickens never carried through with his threat, and the individuals, if his list ever existed, were never named. The Home Office said this evening that despite a search of the records, their copies of the original dossier are now missing. The public will be astonished that uh, documents from the 1980s, this isn't the 1880s, it's the 1980s, have not been retained. They will be astonished because the detail in those uh, includes accusations against uh, alleged paedophiles. They will be astonished that they've been destroyed and the public will conclude uh, and you can understand them concluding this, that they've been destroyed in an attempt to protect the names of the people that are named in the dossier. Who can blame the public for reaching that conclusion? More than 120 MPs from all parties are now calling for a full inquiry into allegations of historic sex abuse. They say only that can shed some light on events of 30 or 40 years ago. But with documents lost and memories fading, many fear it may already be too late to get at the full truth.
Jim Reeve, well, I'm joined now by the former Children's Minister, Tim Lawton, who has written to the Home Secretary, Theresa May, in the past, asking for an overarching public inquiry into historic cases of sex abuse, and also by Labour's Meg Munn, who chairs the all-party group on child protection in the Commons. Before we get on to the idea of an inquiry, what do you make of the fact that, you know, in the 1980s, not, as we say, the 1880s, the Home Office seems to have mislaid this dossier? I think it just compounds the scepticism people have of why these things weren't taken seriously. There are all sorts of other cases not involving celebrities or, or politicians where the police were given evidence, they didn't act on it, it went missing, it got shoved under the, the carpet. And this just adds to the, the question marks that are coming every day, every week this story goes on. It, it, it does le lead to a whole question of trust. Why should the public trust authority? Well, I think what we're looking at here is an issue at the moment about what's happened to this information. And there should be at least clear information within the Home Office and within the police as to what they've done with those records. I worked in social services in the 1980s and there were very clear procedures around what you did with, with files and information. And that's what the public has a right to expect. But on the question of uh, an actual parliamentary inquiry, I mean, what are the parameters? I mean, what are the areas? It, it, the problem is, isn't it, we've been incredibly kind of nebulous. Well, it needs to go where it needs to go. And the problem is every week we are getting a new story about historic child uh, abuse. It might be celebrities. It was Jimmy Savile's revelations last week, Rolf Harris uh, this week. Next week, I think there's going to be more on Rochdale um, children's homes. There are things happening in the NHS, within the BBC, within independent schools, music schools. But this why? Is but why? Effect. But, the, but what would be the value of conflating those into an inquiry? Well, I think the, the two things have to be separate because at the moment we're having all these confusing cases going on. We're having new reviews set up all the time that are reporting, then another one reports conflicting evidence. And the public is absolutely confused and losing confidence that children are being protected properly. Now, we need to put this into historical context to see what went wrong, how it went wrong, to make sure it's not but still going wrong. Meg Mann, I mean, you are a specialist in child protection. Mm. That's what uh, you're looking into. So mm. why haven't you signed up for this inquiry? Well, I'm not convinced this is the right way forward. If there are individual allegations, then those should be investigated by the police. And the fact that we've had these allegations uh, made, which have been investigated and now we've got uh, successful prosecutions, is making it much more likely that people will come <coughs> forward. And we know that's happening. My view is, is that we already know a lot about what went wrong. We know what we should be doing now and I think there are questions about how the government is managing child sexual abuse now and how we are looking after and making sure that those are properly being investigated so, today. So what you'll be looking for is a kind of review of what's happening now rather than an historic well, well the, the all-party group, which Tim is also mm. on, has done an inquiry into child sexual abuse and we've mm. come up with recommendations particularly around whistleblowing, <clears throat> particularly around better training, which would make things better for children now. But isn't there a real problem, as we see in, in all kinds of uh, cases, with whistleblowing? There is, and that's why it's really important that the government looks again at its guidance and makes sure that whistleblowers, when they come forward, know that they will be taken seriously. Well, there is a form uh, of whistleblowing that can be called parliamentary privilege. I mean, if you have information about specifics, why don't you use parliamentary privilege? Well, it may come to that. I mean, do you have... I'm not going to ask you, but it is clearly well, we could I, we never say go, anything. We won't go into detail because we've been there But do you have before. information? Uh, the certain people have come to us with all sorts of uh, uh, information and we need to make sure it's corroborated. But I I'm much more interested in putting all this into the context of where we've um, come from because the great irony is that this government has actually done an awful lot in child protection, overhauling the child protection system. I launched when I was the Minister the Child Sexual Exploitation Action Plan to deal with some of the gangs of people doing this now. But Children are much safer now but all that good work is being undermined by the doubts and question marks that are coming from this drip drip feed of these but historical cases. But if you're saying cases. that people are coming forward to you are these private individuals or public figures no these are these are private individuals coming so, forward with all sorts so of so what do you think is, is behind all the fact that we're that there isn't a big investigation are you alleging a cover-up well, we don't know. That's just the whole point. But when you have reports going missing, when you have police not acting on victims very clearly having come forward, was there some conspiracy? Was it complacency? Was there a network going on? We don't know. And until we lay all this bare, 
every stone is should yeah, be turn, it's, turned it's, over. We won't know to and, give confidence back to the well, public. I, I want, to, I want right to ask now. you both about this very briefly. Are you saying actually there's a possibility the police are not acting correctly? Well, the police haven't been acting correctly in the past. Quite so therefore, clearly. why should the public have trust in the police? Well, what we're seeing now is that allegations of child sexual abuse, both historical and current, are taken more seriously. The police yeah. are the right people to investigate, not Parliament. Thank you both very much indeed.